Stopping off a morning rush, employers are navigating through what is now President Biden's latest stance on getting Americans vaccinated against COVID-19. Private sector companies with more than 100 workers are asked to require them to get vaccinated or get tested every week. Also, all federal and contract workers must get their shots or face losing their jobs. For New Mexicans who qualify for the state's latest uh, last round of uh, vaccine incentives, rather, today is your last day to register to receive the $100. The deadline will be at 5 o'clock this evening. Now, for anyone who got a shot during the month of August, they can go sign up on the Department of Health website. The state's launched a program to ensure pre-K teachers are paid the same as K-12 through teachers with the same qualifications. More than 200 teachers, directors, and teaching assistants qualify for the monthly payments from the state. This will bump up educator salaries within the range of forty-one to $65,000. A militia group that showed up to the Don Juan de Oñate protest in Albuquerque last year with guns is now suing the city. At last summer's protest of the Oñate statue near Old Town, eight, about eight members rather, of the heavily armed New Mexico Civil Guard showed up. Members claimed that they did nothing wrong and they were detained anyway. Erica. A forecast temperatures this morning are starting in the upper 60s, a really nice mild start to the day in the metro. And it's going to be hot again with temps in the mid 90s by the mid afternoon. After months of closed doors and restrictions, small businesses that took a hit in New Mexico, a big hit in New Mexico, are somewhat seeing a rebound. Painted Lady, Painted Lady Bed and Brew, the owner, Jesse Heron, says that he has seen some improvement this year. And with a return to restrictions uncertain, Heron went to the city for help, getting a $10,000 small business entrepreneurial recovery grant. A popular coffee chain is collecting donations to help local youth. Today, Dutch Bros will be donating $1 from every drink sold to help the Boys and Girls Club of Central New Mexico. It will be at all of the Bernalillo County and Rio Rancho locations. A man who murdered another man at a mayoral candidate's office in 2017 will finish his life sentence. Now that comes after a ruling from the state Supreme Court. Steve Kramer was found guilty of shooting Vincent Gutierrez. Kramer claimed the evidence presented at his trial was insufficient and called for a new one. A 77-year-old murder suspect will stay behind bars until his trial. Investigator say Lee Jensen admitted to shooting and killing his sister Chris Neal last November. Jensen had been released into an alcohol recovery program in July under strict orders not to drink. Erica. And here's a look at the Metro Threat Index. Today is going to be super hot, so avoid going out for some strenuous activities or hikes in the Sandias during the afternoon. Tesla is expanding into New Mexico. The company is now converting an old casino on the Nambe Pueblo into its first sales, service, and delivery center in the state. A state law requiring auto sales to go through independent dealerships previously prevented a Tesla location here in New Mexico. It is day two of this year's New Mexico State Fair. Officials saying it's off to a great start. This is, of course, the first state fair since before the start of the pandemic. A full slate of concerts, art, and entertainment are all slated for today. A quick reminder this year, fairgoers, you need to require proof of your COVID va vaccine for entry. The fair runs to the 19th. And of course, state police are once again making sure that the fair is safe for families. This is the sixth year for the Tag Your Tots program. State police collect the parent and child information and children will then get a wristband with an ID number on it, making it easy for them to reunite with their parents if they get lost. Erica. All right, let's get a look at the morning drive. Here's a look at the traffic maps. They are completely clear, no accidents or slowdowns. And here's a look at Tracker, currently going east on I-40 near 4th Street. Everything is moving right along, not many cars out on the roads there. A young pilot who is now traveling around the globe made a stop here in Albuquerque. 19-year-old Zara Rutherford, she is now working to become the youngest woman to ever to fly solo around the world. The native of Belgium hopes that her journey is going to be especially inspiring to young girls to get them into aviation and STEM subjects. Rutherford plans to visit 52 countries on five continents in 12 weeks. We wish her good luck. Welcome back. On this day in 1973, 1.75 inch or golf ball size hail caused extensive, extensive damage to homes and crops in Valencia County. Several small animals were killed by that hail. Time now for the five facts. At number five, this year's state fair is off to a great start. And this is, of course, the, fir the first state fair since the beginning of the pandemic. And those who showed up for opening day were treated to short lines at rides and vendors. A full slate of concerts, art, and entertainment is set for today. A reminder, though, that this year fairgoers are required to show proof of vaccine for entry, and the fair runs through the 19th.
Number four, after months of closed doors and restrictions, small businesses took a big hit in the state. Painted Lady Bed and Brew owner Jesse Heron says that he has seen some improvement this year with return to restrictions and certain though he went to the city for help, getting a $10,000 small business entrepreneurial recovery grant. The city will start distributing the grant money today to help hundreds of local small businesses that applied. And at number three, today we're going to be seeing more haze in the sky, but otherwise sunshine with hot Temperatures making it back into record territory. Number two now, the New Mexico Civil Guard militia group that showed up to the Don Juan de Oñate protest in Albuquerque last year with guns is now suing the city. They claim that they were targeted that night by law enforcement, alleging that the city was aware that the Civil Guard was going to be there. However, members claim they did nothing wrong and were still detained. The Bertolio County DA has previously said that the members had a right to be at the protest and to bear arms. However, he says they did not have the right to intervene as enforcers of the law. And at number one, employers are now navigating through what is now President Biden's latest stance on getting Americans vaccinated against COVID-19. The president's action plan now mandates that the private sector companies with more than 100 workers require them to be vaccinated or test for the virus weekly. Now, employees at health facility, facilities rather receiving Medicare or Medicaid money will have to be fully vaccinated and all federal and contract workers must get their shots or face losing their jobs. Well, the president is also urging schools to set up regular testing for staff and students as the cases among children and teenagers continue to rise with the Delta variant.